Now I think it's time for us to solve problems regarding the differentiation of transcendental functions. But before we do, make sure that you've already memorized all the rules because it gets kind of tricky when you haven't memorized the rules and you might get lost in the process during uh, the problem solving proper. So if you haven't memorized them all, I suggest that you stop this video first and then memorize them. But if you still want to continue, then um, whenever you get confused or getting lost in the process, you might as well want to pause this and then go back with the rules and then just review for a little while just so you can get a good grasp of what's happening. So I'll be taking those examples from your module and these are classified as easy problems from your module. So let's have this one. This is the cosine inverse of sine x plus sine inverse of cosine of x. We need to find the derivative. Now I want to emphasize that whenever you see something like this form, cosine raised to negative 1, that only means that I'm taking the arc cosine or the inverse of cosine instead of saying that this is actually 1 over cosine. So from here on out, I won't be uh, using this expression to mean that I'm taking the cosine raised to negative 1 as if it's a power. So I'll be using this expression to emphasize that I'm taking the inverse of any trigonometric function instead of it raising to its negative 1 power. Okay, so let's proceed with this one. So we need to uh, take the derivative of this one first and it's a uh, inverse cosine. And remember, inverse cosine has a property of um, having negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared. So that's actually the derivative already. So 1 minus sine squared x. And remember, whenever you differentiate, you still need to differentiate this expression that's inside of all the transcendental functions. So for example, if this is u, then you need to take the du over dx of this expression. So in that case, the derivative of sine x is cosine of x. So in this case, we're done with the first. And then for the second one, we have sine inverse of cosine of x. So the derivative of the arc sine is um, 1 over the square root of 1 minus. Uh, that's u squared. So our u here is cosine of x. So that's simply cosine squared of x. And then, of course, we need to take the derivative of cosine. So that's negative sine of x okay so we're pretty much done with the derivative we can now actually uh, do some simplifying here so with that i have negative cosine of x and then that's the square i mean over the square root of 1 minus sine squared x can be simplified to cosine squared x and then this one is minus sine of x divided by the square root of sine squared x and then from this expression, we know very well that that's actually negative cosine of x, then divided by positive negative cosine of x, because that's the root of this cosine of x. Then we have minus sine x divided by plus or minus sine x. Okay, And with this, we can now obtain the possible values of our derivative. So in this case, we have, if we take this as negative and then this one's negative that will be positive 1 but if it's positive then that will be negative 1 so in this case the answer for this expression is simply positive or negative 1 and then we have minus that's actually positive negative 1 therefore if you want to evaluate this plus minus 1 and then minus plus minus 1 this results to uh, let's say we choose positive for both um, expressions so we have 1 minus 1 and if you try to use positive and then negative for the next one, you have 1 minus negative 1, then negative minus um, positive 1, and then we have negative 1 minus, I think that's negative 1. Okay, so with this, I've already evaluated all the possible expressions for this function or expression. So in this case, we have 0. For this one, we have positive 2. In this case, we have negative 2, and then this one is 0. So therefore, the answer for this problem is positive or negative 2 or 0 okay so this is the answer for this derivative so you might be wondering why I was able to get um, an, an answer that is actually not an expression in terms of x so basically we apply the rules of trigonometry so uh, that's it that's it in this case but um, in a more general answer this should be the general answer but of course, when you try to simplify this, you can actually get these values.
Okay, so so much for this. Let's move on with this um, derivative of this expression. So this is basically the logarithm of x to the negative 1 minus 1. That's base 3. And then we have the natural logarithm. So that's basically logarithm of this cosecant x and then base e. And now we need to take the derivative of that. So remember, the derivative of any log of u base a is simply 1 over u. And then that's 1 over ln of a. And then we take the derivative of u. And then if it's ln, so that's natural logarithm, then that simply means that we have 1 over ln e here, which becomes 1. That's why we're left with 1 over u only. Now from this expression, we know that the, the derivative following this rule, we know that that's 1 over x to the negative 1 minus 1. And then we multiply this with 1 over ln of 3. And then we take the derivative of u, and in this case, that's x to the negative 1 minus 1. So that is simply negative 1 times x raised to negative 2, and then minus 0. So that's the derivative. And then we add, so we add the derivative of this ln of cosecant x, so that's simply 1 over cosecant of x. And then the derivative of cosecant of x is actually um, negative cosecant x cotangent x okay now let us simplify the above expression so what we have here is the negative of x to the negative 2 so that becomes 1 I mean negative 1 over x squared times x to the negative 1 minus 1 and then this is actually multiplied to um, ln of 3 okay so um, let me just write it at the middle so that's negative 1, and then we add or subtract, so we subtract this, cosecant x, cotangent x, so um, having this expression simplified, so we get only cotangent x because this cancels out, so that's negative cotangent of x, okay? So uh, let's simplify this further, so we have negative 1 over, in this case we have x squared, I mean x, minus x squared and then we multiply this with ln of 3 and then minus cotangent of x so this is our answer um, now you can also express this in terms of logarithm if you want so that becomes something like log of 3 base um, e uh, but in this case I'll just leave it right here so this is the final answer can still simplify this if you want to do some rules but I'll just be leaving this and this is the answer for that expression okay so for the next one what we have is this one okay so the next one is we need to find the derivative of this expression that's y is equal to e raised to um, to a lot of exponent x and by the way um, I just want to give something like y prime here so that we don't get any trouble with the answers because that's typically wrong if you don't give something like this okay, or you, you can use f prime of x in this case and let's move on with this problem we have y is equal to e raised to e raised to e to the x okay now remember the derivative so when we try to take the derivative of e to the x, we know that this is simply e to the x and then the x. So it's just like you copy the expression, whatever it is, and then you differentiate the exponent. So from this one, if it is e raised to a certain power, let's just copy whatever it is. So that's e raised to e raised to e, and then raised to x, and then differentiate e raised to e raised to x. And with that, we know that we'll just have to copy it because it's e raised to e raised to x so that's e and then e raised to x and then we need to differentiate the remaining e to the x so we copy it and then we're left with the derivative of x which is actually 1 okay so this is how this expression works it's just like um, a lot of chain rules and then just applying this exponential derivative now if we would factor out the base of this exponent we can say that that's simply e and then that is actually raised to e to the e to the x and then we add e to the x and then we add x 
So this is kind of like the simplest expression we can give here. So basically, um, we just added all the exponents because they have the same base. Okay, so this is the answer for this expression. Now let's add some thrill on our problem solving. So let's have this expression. This is actually kind of difficult or average, I think, I don't know, whichever is the case based on your module. So let's have this, that's f of x is equal to sine raised to x and then times x squared. So um, this can also be rewritten in terms of something like f of x is equal to sine of x squared and then you raise this whole term to x. Okay. Now, are there two ways that we can solve this? And I will show you both of them. But uh, first, um, let's take a look at the first or direct way in solving this. So remember, uh, this is an example of u to the v expression. This is how it looks like. And then remember, when you have something like uh, f of x is equal to u to the v, wherein u and v are expressions of x. So the derivative of this expression is something like you uh, assume that this is something like a power rule first. So if it's power rule, then you take this as an exponent of v and then times u raised to v minus one, and then you take the derivative of u, so that's the u over dx. Okay, and then you add as if this is something like an exponential function wherein the base is constant while this one is a variable. So it's like u to the v, and then you take the ln of um, u, and then you take the derivative of v, which is dv over dx. So that's it for our derivative in this case. Now, applying this rule, we know very well that f prime of x, I'll be writing here because it's kind of long. So we have applying this something like product rule. So we have x times sine of x minus one. And then we have up here x squared. And then we need to take the derivative of sine of x squared, which is actually equal to cosine of x squared but then again this is chain rule so we multiply this with 2x okay so we're done with the first um, term so for I, I mean it's not the first term but uh, something like part of the rule and then we proceed with the second part so we add and then you just copy u to the v so that's simply sine raised to x and then x squared and then you multiply this with ln of u and u here is simply sine of x squared so that's ln of sine of x squared okay and then you take the derivative of v and in this case v is x so that's simply one okay so that's times one and then when you rewrite this or um, simplify this we get f prime of x is actually equal to 2 x squared and then we have cosine of x squared times uh, let's say sine of x minus sine, sine of x squared is to x minus 1 and then plus we have sine of x squared raised to x and then that is simply ln of sine of x squared so this is our final answer when we use uh, this first method that we have So this is our final answer when we use the direct um, differentiation method that is presented in your module. Um, now, for the second solution, if you don't know or you haven't memorized this rule, you can actually do something like algebra before you try to solve this. So we start with f of x, or the original equation being something like this one. Okay, And we know very well that if we try to take the if you want to like uh, move it in front of sine just to uh, bring this exponent down we can take the natural logarithm of both sides so we have the ln of f of x so we take the natural natural logarithm of both sides so we have also ln of the expression right here okay and then we know from the property of ln you can actually move it in front of the expression because that's how the properties of natural logarithm works or even the logarithm so you have x and then ln of sine 
and then x squared. Okay, so with this, we can now um, perform implicit differentiation because as you can see, it's just product rule and then this one is something like one expression in terms of f of x. So with this, um, implicitly differentiating this expression together with this one, that's simply 1 over f of x because uh, that's a, the derivative of ln. And then, of course, the derivative of f of x is simply f prime of x. And then that is equal to product rule. So we have x times the derivative of this expression. So that's 1 over sine of x squared. And then we need to differentiate the sine of x squared. So that's cosine of x squared times 2x. Okay, And then we add, because that's product rule, ln of sine of x squared and then the derivative of x is simply 1. Okay, So with this, we need to express this whole term in terms of just f prime of x. So that's simply um, f prime of x is equal to this expression. So that's actually 2x squared and then cosine of x squared and then divided by sine of x squared and then plus ln of sine of x squared and then we need to multiply all of this by f of x. And in this case, f of x we know is sine x, um, sine of x squared raised to x. So we can just uh, be lazy and copy this. So this is okay. I hope I didn't mess up copying. So I have f prime of x, and then instead of Having this as f of x, I'll just have to multiply this with the original function. So that's um, sine raised to x and then x squared. Okay, so I hope it makes sense. So with this, um, the final answer is f prime of x. That's equal to um, 2x squared and then cosine of x squared times sine raised to x and then x squared divided by sine of x squared and then we add this by multiplying this to the ln expression so we have sine raised to x and then x squared times the natural logarithm of sine of x squared okay so this is our final expression and let's compare this with the answer that we've already obtained using the direct um, differentiation rule so based on this expression, that's actually 2x squared cosine x squared. So we had the same one here. And then this one is sine of x squared raised to x. And then this one is um, at the denominator. But uh, if, as you can see here, it's just the same because if you want to plug this out and then take it at the numerator, that will be negative one. So we just have the same expression for this one. And then how about this one that's sine of x squared raised to x and then ln of sine of x squared. So again, we have the same expression. So Finally, we have uh, the same answer and it's all up to you whether you choose this direct differentiation or using this expression in terms of the natural logarithm. It's just that it's based on your taste, I guess. But the thing is, um, you always select the method that best suits you, especially um, if it's kind of easier for you to um, use this method. Now, if you're more on into memorizing or you're something like you have a mastery over something that you memorize then I suggest you use this expression because this one's the di direct one but if you're one of those who are kind of manipulative and you want to explore a lot of details in differentiation you can use this second method because this is a very general method that you can use whenever you're trying to differentiate and you find it kind of difficult to just use this um, direct differentiation because sometimes people or students tend to understand what's the principle behind any differentiation rule so um, this one best suits for those people but anyway whatever you use you'll just have to get the same answer okay so so much for that let's proceed with another example Now let's have this example and um, one of the rules that we can follow in differentiation whenever we start differentiating is that we inspect the expression first and then let's try to uh, at least um, have an idea of what would happen because 
um, for beginners, it's kind of difficult to just um, jump into that expression. Then, okay, I'll just differentiate it um, like the one in the video. So, it's actually a no no for that one. Uh, what you have to do is to internalize the problem first and then you look on the expression and then try to like dissect all of this and then just understand what will happen. So, um, let me give you um, some example on how you something like dissect this kind of expression. It's not actually a step, it's what is supposed to happen at the back of your mind. So whenever you see something like this, you would uh, be noticing something like expressions that looks that look familiar. For example, this one is e to the cosine of x. Um, it is a combination of the exponential and the trigonometric function, but in general, if you something like let this as u, you can see that this is um, kind of e to the u. And then when you try to uh, represent this again in terms of u, or I mean, uh, let's say another example, let's say, or let's just say another letter, let's say m, because that's my name. So you can just rewrite this as tangent inverse of m. And basically, this simplifies into something like a product rule where you have a uh, multiple and at some point you will realize that this kind of looks like um, a simple um, product rule when you have e to the u and then tangent inverse of m. So in that um, internalization process, is that a word internalization? <laughs> in those uh, moments that you try to internalize a problem, the key here is to try to like um, at the back of your mind let you or let um, an expression be represented as one single variable. So in that way, it simplifies the equation into like um, shorter expression and then it makes you uh, easier. It makes the expression easier to be solved when you try to like internalize like that. But of course, um, it depends upon you. But if you can see it clearly that oh, it's just um, product rule and then you don't have to like um, let this you in terms of cosine of x. So uh, you can just proceed with differentiation. But that's a skill that um, most of the people develop and students. Actually, um, no students are born good in calculus. It's just that um, calculus is learned through practice. And I could attest that um, there are students who are really good at math. In algebra, they were performing very good, but in terms of calculus, they were um, performing just average because um, as what I've told you before, calculus is kind of different story when it comes to mathematics. You, you just don't um, take, uh, just for example, um, simplify expressions and then solve for x mentally. You don't do that in calculus. It takes practice to um, understand how the subtleties of this subject works. So anyway, we proceed with the differentiation. So that's y prime. And this one is equal to, um, we'll, we'll be doing product rule. Imagine this is the separating um, multiplier for this. So we have e to the cosine of x. So I'll just copy it. And then we differentiate this tangent inverse of x. So you can actually um, do something like this. So the derivative of tangent inverse of ln of x cubed so in this way, uh, you would, um, I mean, you would expand the steps and then you won't be getting confused. So it's like um, you do this and then you just copy this for the product rule that you would be setting up and then you just have to do something like this. You can actually do that and, that, and that's the thing I'll be doing. So um, in this case, you can see it clearly that I'm applying product rule. So e raised to cosine of x, and then the derivative of tangent inverse of ln of x cubed. So that's actually 1 over 1 plus x squared. And in this case, x squared becomes ln of x cubed. When I talk about the general rule being 1 over 1 plus x squared, I mean that the, the x is actually what's inside the tangent inverse expression. So that's actually ln of x cubed, but it is squared. And then, of course, you need to differentiate that. So we have 1 over x cubed. And then the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Okay, So as you can see here, we have a lot of chain rule happening. Okay, So we proceed with the next term. So we have plus. I'm now with this expression. 
So that's plus copy a tangent inverse of ln of x cubed. And then we differentiate e to the cosine of x. So that's simply copying e to the cosine of x and then differentiating cosine of x. So that's um, negative sine of x. Okay. So with this, um, we can simplify the expression now. So this becomes, uh, this is actually 3 over x. So we have 3 over um, x because um, this cancels out and then we're left with e a raised to cosine of x at the numerator, I guess. And then we can actually multiply this. So we have 1 plus ln squared of x cubed. Okay. And then we add this expression. Actually, we subtract because this is negative. So minus sine x and then e raised to cosine of x. And, and then we have tangent inverse of ln of x squared. Let me just move this a little lower. Okay. So, oops. So I think um, we're done with this. Now, uh, if you want to like simplify this further, and I don't want to recommend you doing that, but if you still want to simplify this, you can actually do something like simplifying just this expression in logarithm. So you'll have y prime is equal to 3e raised to cosine of x, and then divide this, dividing this by x, and then we have 1 plus. Now remember, this ln square will not be something like 2 ln x cubed because remember, we're applying the properties of logarithm in such a way that we're actually multiplying the exponent of the one that we're taking, the natural logarithm of. So in this case, it's not the square but uh, the cube here. So you can just use 3 ln squared x for this one. And then we have minus sine, I mean, minus sine of x raised to e, I mean, times e cosine of x times the tangent inverse of 2 and then ln of x, okay? So this is how it works for the answer, okay? And this could be your final answer. And of course, I still accept the answer above. Okay, but when it comes to your answer like the one above, I will not give full credits for this because um, though this is already the answer, it's just that um, it kind of looks messy, still messy because um, you haven't done multiplying all of these in this respective numerator denominator. So please do that before you box the final answer. Okay. So let's check if we've already obtained the same answer. Uh, what we did here is we factor out e to the cosine of x. Ah, okay, so that, that can be done as well. So, but I think we've already obtained the same answer from this expression. Okay, so with this, um, I think I messed up with this. <laughs> It should be cube. Sorry. So that should be cube. Okay. Okay. I miss. I actually wrote the wrong number. But anyway, uh, it will just be cubed and then uh, you can just plug out cube at the exponent and then um, put it right in front of the ln expression. Okay. So with this, let's have another one.